Hey everybody, this is Dr. Paul Thomas with Plum Health DPC. Today is April 4th and I'm giving an update on the coronavirus pandemic here in Detroit, Michigan. Let's start by acknowledging that in the United States, the cases continue to increase. There's 274,000 cases and 7,000 deaths. That's a case fatality rate of about two and a half percent. And our number of cases has outpaced Italy, Spain, Germany, China, etc. So which counties have been most impacted by the coronavirus? And all of the counties in New York City, Queens, Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Wayne County here in Michigan, King County in Washington, Orleans County in Louisiana, and others. Um, but Michigan has two counties, Wayne County and Oakland County, in the top six most affected counties. I found this information by going onto the Johns Hopkins website, and they have uh, very good data if you ever want to drill down and see county by county in the United States which uh, areas are affected the most by the coronavirus. It's a, a very eye-opening to take a look at this information. So what are the current number of cases and deaths in Michigan? Currently, um, we're con seeing this really concerning trend of the number of cases doubling every, let's say, three days or so. So uh, let's go 500 to 1,000. That, that was only two days. 1,000 to 2,000 in about two and a half days. 2,000 to 4,000 in about three days. And then 4,000 to 8,000 in about three days as well. So we're seeing this really fast increase in the number of cases. And that speaks to how easily this coronavirus spreads in our communities. We're also seeing an increase in the number of deaths due to coronavirus. And we'll talk about this later, but um, the case fatality rate on this is really high in Michigan, unfortunately. So why has Michigan and Southeast Michigan been hit so hard by the coronavirus? I read a great article in Bridge Magazine where they talked about why this is spread so fast in Michigan. And a couple of things they talked about was the automotive trade. Here in Detroit, we make automobiles and we get parts supplied from Wuhan, China. And so when you're doing international trade, there are people moving back and forth and potentially carrying the coronavirus uh, before we even were aware of the severity of the impact of the coronavirus. So in Detroit, we have Metro Airport, which is in, it's, technically it's in Western Wayne County, about 10 miles west of Detroit or so. And so this is a major hub with direct flights to Wuhan, China. We also had a very big gathering of people on March 10th. We had that presidential primary where people came together in close quarters to vote. We also have ties between Detroit and Italy for Fiat Chrysler. One thing they didn't mention, which I wish they would have, is the higher rates of overweight and obesity. Here in Detroit, our rates of overweight are 47.5%. And for obesity, it's 34.6% of the population. So the vast majority of people in Detroit are overweight or obese. And if you compare that to a city like New York City, um, they have much lower rates of overweight and obesity. I just want you to keep that in mind going forward. So drilling down on the data for the statewide, we talked about the national case fatality rate being at 2.5% or so. Uh, the Michigan case fatality rate is around 3.75%, and the Detroit case fatality rate is around 3.29%. So that's much higher than the national average, and I'm going to talk about why here. So what are the risk factors for dying from coronavirus? And those risk factors are cardiovascular disease, diabetes, pulmonary disease like asthma, COPD, obesity, and cancer. Um, this is actually from a study from China, the case fatality rate is calculated by dividing the total number of deaths from the disease by the number of confirmed cases. And this data is from China from February 11, 2020. So they talk about if you have cardiovascular disease, you have a 10.5% uh, case fatality rate. So, and likewise, if you have diabetes, you have a 7.3% case fatality rate. Whereas if you're healthy with none of the above conditions, you have a case fatality rate of 0.9%. So 
So th these are huge differences. So if you've ever had a heart attack or a stroke, you're basically at a 10 times risk of dying from coronavirus than somebody who hasn't. So um, why are African-Americans disproportionately affected by coronavirus? Um, and the state of Michigan has been doing a great job about reporting data in a really clear way. Um, let me preface this by saying that Michigan has 13.8% of its residents who are African-American or black. Um, however, 35% of the coronavirus cases are black or African-American people, and 40% of the deceased are black or African-American people. So I can't really say exactly why so many African-American folks are dying from this pandemic, but it's something that we should look at, investigate, try to solve quickly, and if we can't solve it quickly, learn from it going forward. I suspect that it has to do with a few different things. One is that African-American folks are more likely to have the chronic medical conditions that we talked about before, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the obesity, et cetera, that increases your risk of dying from coronavirus. And also black and African-American folks might have, be working in those jobs where they're not able to get out of them because they still need them to support their families. One striking example for me is the Detroit bus driver who said, I'm here working to make money for my family. And there's this person coughing on the bus, you know, um, that, that man unfortunately died this week. So I think those two are the biggest factors that are leading this. Um, and these are the social inequality sort of things that we need to address going forward to protect people from pandemics like this. So um, this is a chart from the state of Michigan. It's from 2008, but just if you're looking at the burden of obesity in the state of Michigan, um, African-American folks have a much higher burden of this disease than uh, white folks or Hispanic folks. So what is the hospitalization rate for COVID-19? About 80% of people have mild disease and don't require hospitalization. This is from the Lancet, a well-respected journal in England. Um, so this breaks down, this kind of answers this question more fully. What is the hospitalization rate of COVID-19? So 80% of people who get COVID-19 don't need hospitalization, and roughly 20% of people who get COVID-19 do need hospitalization. And they break it down further, which... I really like so and this is by age so younger people need fewer hospitalizations fewer ICU admissions and less of them die from COVID-19 about 0.1 percent but as you age um, the hospitalization rates are higher the ICU admission is higher case fatality rate is higher going up to 10 percent for folks who are over 85 years of age once you are put on a ventilator uh, there is a really high mortality rate, unfortunately. So only one in five people will survive COVID-19 if they're put on a ventilator. So mortality rate is 81% among those requiring mechanical ventilation. And then this is also from Wuhan, China. So uh, they said 62% of people will, will die who are critically ill from COVID-19. So how are hospitals coping with COVID-19 increased demand. Unfortunately, Detroit hospitals are um, getting overrun. Uh, Henry Ford earlier this week announced that they are full at their Detroit campus and their West Bloomfield campus, and they're having to move patients to other places. Um, they released a letter about how they may need to ration care in terms of ventilator use. Um, and also Beaumont uh, they are nearing capacity. This was last week, March 24th. Um, I also spoke to somebody at a, a hospital system locally who said that they had two ventilators, and this is not a small hospital. This is a large hospital. They had told me that my patient that I had sent to the hospital would not qualify for a ventilator because they had too many pre-existing conditions um, and that they only had two ventilators for available for people who might need it in the case of ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome. So th this is 
the point that we never wanted to get to, the point where we are choosing who gets to live and who gets to die based on ventilator availability. And this is a a really sad moment uh, because we've never had to make decisions like this before. And these are decisions that could have been prevented by good uh, good governance and by um, hospital leaders who were more forward thinking. If you really look at this situation, had we known about the severity of this illness, had our government created a more coordinated response to this, and had our hospital bid business models incentivized um, extra capacity in cases like this, we wouldn't be facing this situation where we have to choose who gets one of the two remaining ventilators and who potentially has to die without even being given a chance on a ventilator. Those are the hard choices that we're facing right now, and it's extremely upsetting. And my heart really goes out to the doctors and the nurses in the hospital, um, especially the doctors who have to make these decisions, these horrible decisions. You know, I've spoken to my colleagues who are near tears on the phone when they talk to me about the hardships that they're facing in making these decisions for patients under their care. It's really a tragedy. So sorry about that, but um, I should wrap this up by answering some of the common questions that I get. Should I wear a mask to prevent the spread of the coronavirus? And yes, you should wear a mask. This is an airborne disease. It's a droplet disease. Every time you speak, every time you cough, every time you sneeze, you emit small, invisible respiratory droplets that are you know, a few nanometers wide, or let's just say very small droplets. And if you wear a mask, that could potentially prevent those droplets from circulating and affecting other people. So what can you do to slow down the coronavirus? Stay at home, donate extra supplies that you have to hospitals like unused N95 masks, unused surgical masks, unused nitrile gloves, donate blood if you can, do not visit elderly folks, and act as though you have the virus. I know this is a little bit deeper and a little bit darker than I wanted to go with this, but it just reflects our current reality, and we really need to look out for each other in this time by staying home and staying socially distant so that we don't infect people who are vulnerable, who will end up at the hospital, Um, and who may die because of this. So um, stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll see you next time.